This lesson will focus on an application of the derivative of an exponential function, particularly looking at the context of growth and decay. So remembering that if we have y is equal to e to the power of f of x, then differentiating y with respect to x gives the derivative of f of x multiplied by the original exponential function e to the power of f of x. We'll come back to that in a moment. So looking at a couple of situations, firstly we have a culture of bacteria where the number of bacteria n is found using an exponential function involving t which is the number of days. So substituting in values will tell us how many bacteria there are after a certain number of days. So n0 is when t equals 0, and we substitute in 0 for t. After one day, we would substitute in 1 for t. If we want to know how many bacteria there are after 10 days, we would substitute in 10 for t, etc. Now this tells us how many bacteria there are at a particular point in time. But differentiating will tell us the continuous rate of change of bacteria. So at what rate is the number of bacteria increasing or decreasing? So that's found by differentiating n with respect to t. And because we have an exponential function, remember we multiply by the derivative. So in this case it's 0.75 and we leave the rest of the function unchanged. And this 2000 here is a scalar which is unaffected by differentiating. So similarly in this second example, this time we have the amount of an investment A and T is in years and this function will tell us the amount the investment is worth after a number of years. So again we could substitute in values for t to find out how much the investment is worth at particular points in time, but differentiating a with respect to t tells us the rate of change, the rate at which the investment is increasing or decreasing at a particular point in time. And notice it's continuous compounding. So it's not compounded every year or every day, it's compounded continuously. So that's another clue that we need to differentiate. So dA by dt this time. Remember our f of x now is 0.12t, so the derivative of that is 0.12, and the function remains unchanged. Now generalising this, if we have y as a e to the kt, so in the previous example a was the initial amount of the investment, k was the interest rate and t is a variable of time, when we differentiate y with respect to t, we're multiplying by k because if our function is kt, then the derivative of that is k, and then a e to the kt is the same as the original function. So really what we're doing is multiplying the original function, which is y, by k. So what we find is that any function in the form y equals a e to the kt the rate of change of y with respect to t is proportional to y itself. So it's just y multiplied by that scalar value k. Looking at this in reverse, if we know that the derivative of p with respect to t is a scalar multiple of p, then p can be modelled by an equation of the form p0 e to the kt. So p0 is the initial value, k is that scalar. 
So we know if we have a derivative that looks like this, that anti-differentiating will give us an exponential function. Or in terms of y and x, if dy by dx is ky, then y is of the form a e to the k x. We'll work through some examples which make use of this result. So firstly we're looking at population over a 20 year period from 1985 when we're told that the population was 2 million. We're then told that the population was continuously growing and that we've got dp by dt close to p over 20. So if we're going to estimate the population we need a function which expresses p in terms of t. At the moment we've got dp by dt so we can write that as dp by dt is approximately equal to a scalar multiple of p, 1 over 20 p. So from that previous result we actually have dp by dt approximately equal to kp where k is 1 over 20. So now if we substitute in some values and use the antiderivative from before, so we have it in this form, we can now model it using p0 which is the initial population and k which is that scalar multiple. So p is approximately equal to, the initial population is 2 million, and e to the k which is 1 over 20 times t, so t over 20. Now if we want to estimate that population at the end of 20 years, we substitute in a value of t equals 20, and that tells us that p is approximately equal to 2 million e to the power of now 20 over 20 is just 1, so this is 2 million e, and then if you put that into your calculator, and round to two significant figures, it's 5.4 million, 5 million 400 thousand. Remembering that the convention when estimating is to round to two significant figures. Part B is very similar to part A. You have to work out the T values yourselves though. Given that we started in 1985, what values of t would you need to substitute in for 2025, 2040 and 2065? Try those ones yourselves and check your answers with me in a moment. Your t values are 40, 55 and 80 and when you substitute these into the formula you found in part a, to the nearest million you get populations of 15 million, 31 million and 109 million. Next we have a situation involving continuous decay. So this radioactive isotope decays continuously at a rate of 9% per year. So dA by dt, the rate at which the amount is decaying, and because it's decay and not increase, it's negative 0.09 A. We're given some information that one kilogram is produced in a particular industrial process, so how much remains undecayed after 20 years? So now we're looking for the amount, not the rate, which means we need to anti-differentiate. So again, using that formula from before, We've got dA by dt as a scalar multiple of A. So when we anti-differentiate, we've got the initial amount, which is 1 kilogram. So I'll write this in grams as 1,000 grams. And then E to the scalar, which is negative 0 0.09 times T. After 20 years, that means substituting in a value of 20 for t, which to the nearest gram is 165 grams. That's to three significant figures. Finally, we have a compound interest example. 
So we've got a savings account opened with a deposit of $400, interest rate 8% and it is compounded continuously. So there's the clue that we're dealing with an exponential function. So firstly, what will the balance be at the end of five years? We know that the principal grows at a rate of 0 0.08 per annum and when we anti-differentiate P with respect to T our initial amount is $400 E to the 0 0.08 and after five years we can substitute in that value because it's money we round to two decimal places $596.73 in the second example, we want to know how long it's going to take for the balance to treble. So in other words, how long will it take for this $400 to become $1,200? We need to solve this equation and solve for t. So 1,200 is equal to 400 e to the 0 0.08 t. So using the calculator, action, equation inequality, solve, put in the equation 1200 equals 400e to the 0 0.08 and we can use x as our variable and we're solving for x. The calculator if you're set up in standard will give you an answer in terms of a logarithm so convert that into a decimal 13.7 to one decimal place, which is what the question was asking.